The knife was wrapped in a white towel. Both the towel and the knife were caked with dried blood. Codes of DNA bind people together. The hard facts can lead to a legal separation as well. Michael, you are not. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. Blood consistent with both victims was found in Simpson's Bronco. In this installment, we're counting down our picks for the five most interesting facts you probably didn't know about DNA evidence. Number 5. DNA was first used for a criminal investigation in 1986. Both genetic fingerprinting and DNA profiling were theories rather than accepted legal practices. And due to the innovations of Professor Alec Jeffries, DNA first assisted criminal prosecutors in 1986. After the rape and murder of two Englishwomen, a teenager with learning disabilities became the prime suspect. But with Jeffries' discovery of how to separate sperm and vaginal cells, the evidence linked another man to the crime. And so after a long history of flashing women, it was revealed that Colin Pitchfork's crimes had taken a more violent turn, which ultimately led to a life sentence in prison. By convicting Pitchfork and clearing Buckland of these crimes, this case was both the first exoneration and conviction via DNA fingerprinting. Number 4. Thanks to TV, jurors expect DNA evidence. Given the popularity of the CSI franchise and earlier the media circus that was the O.J. Simpson trial, DNA evidence has become a standard expectation for modern jurors. This expectation is part of what's known as the CSI effect. One of the largest studies on this supposed effect found that 73% of prospective jurors expect to see DNA evidence presented in rape cases, while 22% expect to see it in every criminal case. I swabbed the blood and sent a sample to the DNA lab. The lab technician ran a sample through CODIS. The DNA sample was a match to a recent rape and homicide victim. In other words, the general public now understands the power of DNA and the creative ways in which it can be acquired. Fans of crime procedurals may think they have a better understanding of how DNA works, but those shows are often criticized for being inaccurate in their science. The show's only an hour long. Laser ablation takes like six. Yeah, but when they cut it together, it'll only take 30 seconds. So then the question becomes, does a juror's perceived understanding of forensics have an impact on their decision making? Research on the topic seems to say, thankfully, that it does not. So much for that CSI effect. Number 3. Police collect DNA without your knowledge. Police may collect DNA without your knowledge. While covert operations sometimes reveal police entrapment, American criminal investigators may legally collect DNA without a subject's knowledge. This might take the form of a police officer telling a detainee to spit out their gum, or innocently offering a glass of water only to collect that gum or that drinking glass to obtain a DNA sample. In 1988, the Supreme Court of the U.S. determined that evidence can be collected from garbage left on the curb in front of a home. Of course, cops don't need to steal your used hankies to collect DNA. A 2013 Supreme Court ruling affirmed that U.S. police officers can collect a cheek swab from an arrestee just as they'd collect fingerprints. It's just a cheek swab, it won't take but a second. And over in the United Kingdom, investigators may also collect public samples. However, private investigators may not legally employ such tactics due to the Human Tissues Act of 2004. Number 2. It's possible to have two sets of DNA. In the early stages of pregnancy, a fetus can be absorbed by its twin, which can occasionally lead to a second set of DNA being present within the surviving twin. As many of you know, I ate my twin sister in utero. So, on my birthday, I try to remember I'm a winner. Having two separate sets of DNA is called chimerism. Strangely enough, this means that paternity and maternity tests have yielded some inexplicable results, causing a little bit of stress for those just learning of their unborn twin. One chimera, Lydia Fairchild, nearly lost custody of her children after DNA tests indicated she was not their mother. In 2014, a 34-year-old Washington man also learned that he was, genetically, not the father of his own children, given that he was carrying DNA of his unborn twin. And so, DNA evidence not only assists in real-life courtroom dramas, but sometimes creates some unexpected family dramas as well. You are not! <laughs> Number 1. A DNA mistake created a fictitious serial killer. From 1993 to 2009, a female serial killer left DNA at murder scenes in Germany, Austria, and France. 
This unidentified woman became known as the Phantom of Heilbronn. However, it turns out that she didn't actually exist. The so-called woman without a face was created due to contaminated cotton swabs. Apparently, all the law enforcement agencies involved had been ordering cotton swabs from the same factory. And apparently, one of the female factory workers had gotten some of her DNA on them. And so truth and justice evaded the grieving families of those murder victims while investigators hunted down a fabricated serial killer, all because of one procedural error. This never would have happened if European forensics experts watched more CSI. Looks like something caught her. So, do you think watching police procedurals has made you a better crime fighter? Nail polish, diamond particles. Maybe she was giving herself a mani and pedi before the assault. And do you know anyone who has been legally tormented by an unborn twin? For more incontrovertible top 10s and contaminated top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You need to just grill these fingerprints off, alright? Grill these fingerprints off? Are you, are you nuts?